we have been talking um, about returning to God. That's what we've been talking about, returning to God. Every time judgment comes to the people of the world, to a nation and to a home, is because God is looking to get the people's attention. We have been preaching last week on Elijah the prophet prophesying to Israel that God is going to send the rain. God is going to send the rain. And the reason why God is going to send the rain is because God had used drought, drought, for three and a half years to get to the, the attention of his people. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1, when of God came to Elijah, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And the word of God says that Elijah went and showed himself to Ahab. And Ahab wanted to to really kill Elijah. But he knew that God had judged the nation because this righteous, God-fearing man who had prophesied this farming over the nation had now come to probably bring good tidings because he had prophesied that the time had come for it now to reign again, for God to visit the people again. But in order for God to visit the people again, the, the premise that God was operating with is that the people had to return to God, come back to God. It is said that comfort, peace, and blessings could easily work against us adversely and take our hearts away from God. That when we realize that things are good, we feel that we can just continue the way we are. But the hope of God in allowing us the times of trials and testings is so that we can come to him to find help and realize that we, we need God in the midst of obscurity, despair, confusion, to name a few negative things. You know, it is said that Joel is the, is, the, is the last day prophet. He is the prophet that prophesies the end times. In Joel chapter 20, Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, we read in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, and it came to pass after what? That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Peter echoed this in the book of Acts chapter 2. Peter says, in the last days saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Peter was quoting Joel the prophet, word for word, that Joel is the last day prophet. 
Well, chapter 2 of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 1, Joel is talking about some of the effects of the last day. The prophecy of Joel that prophesies the last day speaks of pestilence. As you would read in the book of Matthew's gospel in the 24th, in the 25th chapter of Matthew, you would read how Jesus Christ speaking from the Mount of Olives, from verse 4, Jesus begins to talk about, uh, um, about the, the judgment to come. Watch at verse, chapter 24 and verse 4, Akim. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and he shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and you shall see that you be not troubled, for all these must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. As we, we look at what is being prophesied about the end time, about the last days. We see it like Every day when we listen to, to which is your favorite network, if it is CNN or MSNBC, or if it is Fox News, or if it is Al Jazeera, or one of these foreign news, and you listen to what's happening across the world, it's like if you are reading the Bible, when you look at these news, international news, is as if you are reading Matthew chapter 24. Is if you are re like you are reading the book of Joel again. Because Joel is prophesying in Joel chapter 2 and verse 1. Joel is, is prophesying and Joel is saying, Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the whole land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now we have sang that song in rejoicing and we kick the foot up. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in Zion. And now we, we oftentimes we sing that and because people are not acquainted in the word of God, they don't know they are singing judgment. They are singing judgment. And people are merrily singing judgment because Joel blew the trumpet in Zion, Zion. As Joel is prophesying, verse 2, about a dreadful day. He says it's a day of trembling in verse 1. He says it's a day of darkness. Out of gloominess. A day of clouds. And a day of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There had not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even of the years of many generations. Joel is say, saying that a, a great army is coming. And, and like it's going to be never like before. Verse 3. It's never like before. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and nothing shall escape them. John is talking about God using pestilence to judge the world. 
God is using viruses, germs, to cause man to not be able to fight against him. You see, men can fight against one another. We see some bitter wars. We just observed America leaving Afghanistan and the Afghanistanis could not have even stand up, though American trained, over 300,000 men trained to defend their nation. They, they just walked away after their president flew out of the country. And the Taliban, same people of Afghanistan who lives on the on, on the, in, in the hearts of, heart of the mountains of Afghanistan, comes down into the valley and takes the nation. Trillions of dollars in American equipment and training just went down the ground, gone, gone, wrong the ground for a strong as Islamic um, spirit to manifest itself in the nation, bringing into subjection as never like before, women and the common citizens of the country to be ruled under Sharia law. But this kind of judgment is one that can easily be overtaken because we have seen the Taliban's in power already and have have been crushed by the the, the Russians and and then the, the United Nation came in and freed the people from the Russian control and, and given, back, given back the nations to the people, uh, if you have followed your history. But this is, this, these things can, can be corrected. These things can have transformation. We see the religious disturbances in countries like Iran. With, 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 the, with the Ayatollahs and they having difficulty to stabilize the country because of the infightings. You have to, to listen to the news to get much of that. Uh, that it, it may sound, amen, that they are such a, a world force and a world power, but inside of their home, there is so much instability. America had a terrible time and it continues to wheel even in more terrible times because of the Republicans and the Democrats and Trumpism and, 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 and Bidenism and all these different divides and, and even in the midst of the pandemic because of how the Republicans view the Democrats they have taken uh, um, the, 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 the whole confusion into confusing the whole the whole science of of how we should how we should balance the vaccine that has been released by the said Republicans under Trump. The world is under a tremendous um, struggle as it relates to how it should live its life in peace, how it should how it should should submit itself to the discipline of leadership. It is, it is nation against nation, ethnos against ethnos. Um, people uh, ha have lost a sense of respect and, and submission for leadership in nations so that anarchy has taken place. So as a result of anarchism, you have great crimes taking place in nations. People are dying, if not by 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 the virus, if not by by the stress, suicides are mounting up, some mountain. In fact, I was listening that to, to some statistics in Trinidad and Tobago here alone. Um, for the last nine months, we have had ninety suicidal records. When we look at our, around the world and we see the earthquakes and we see. Um, the, the kind of disaster with the, with, with, with the rain 
falling and, 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 and the hurricanes blowing through the, 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 the western side of the world. While the western side of the world is dealing with hurricanes, um, the, 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 the further north we go across the world, we see the, the, the terrible un, oh, I mean, cyclones that are blowing across the nations of, of these outer worlds that is cre creating massive floods in Europe. It's like if we are reading the Bible Amen. about what is taking place at the end. So undoubtedly, we are in the end times. Joel, amen, begins to prophesy about how when the locust comes through the land, it, 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 it leaves behind them a desolate wilderness. Look at it in verse 3. It leaves behind them a desolate wilderness. So there is no turning back of the judgment, amen, of the pestilence. The pestilence see everything ahead of them as fruit. Everything ahead of them is fruit. In fact, the word of God says, amen, behind them is a flame that burneth. And the land that is before them is like the Garden of Eden. They see all, all they see is listen, more to destroy. More to destroy. And God says, They are my army. They are my army. They are my army because I want my people to realize that no judgment is coming. Mercy and hope is ahead of them. So when we look at when we look at Joel chapter two and and verse seventeen, we, we, we see jo Joel is saying, "Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them swear, spare thy people, O Lord, and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give." not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them therefore should they say among the people where is their God in verse 12 if we should go higher up you realize that in this same chapter in verse 12 Joel is saying therefore also now saith the Lord return ye even to me with all your heart with fasting and with weeping and with mourning is a call from God to, to come back. Yeah. A call from God. The only one that can spear us in the midst of what is happening in the world today is, is Almighty God. And God says the way for it to happen is, to, is for God to spear us. For God to bring us back to him but we must come before him with with a with a broken heart and with fasting and with weeping and with moaning you know oftentimes we have read the scripture in times past and when we have read the scripture we have had drunken people read the scripture to us drunken people Mad people say, Pastor, what do you say? I'm saying, many, many times you hear all them drunks and people say, he know he Bible, and know which Bible. I set a little piece of thing here. <laughs> Some people quoting scripture who never even read the Bible. It's a little piece of thing here and then they mix it in with what they want to mix it with in and confuse a set of Christians who should know better. Amen. But because they they don't know their, their Bible themselves. They allow these ungodly people, amen, to take them into ways where they live in fear. Amen. And they, so the man quotes the verse 13 of the text. Amen. Says, rend your heart and not your garments. And they, they take quote a little piece and say, render your heart. What the Bible say? Render your heart. The Bible has never said render your heart. Look how you show you dress up. You dress up not to go to church. You don't know the Bible says, rend your heart, rend your heart, and not your garment. The Bible did not say that. Just a heart. But make sure your heart is rend. Rend your heart. Rend your heart. God is looking for people to serve Him from the heart. 
God has nothing to do with your clothes. God has everything to do with your heart. It's not that which goes into a man or go upon a man that defiles him. But that which comes out of him defiles him. What comes out of you. And God says, I, I want you to rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And repenteth of the evil. God does not want us to, 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 to live in the evil that we are living in. God does not want us to live in the evil that we are living in. If you would, 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 would notice, as God speaks, God speaks to the children of Israel, and God tells them that, I, am, I, I want to bring restoration. Let's take a look at the 17th verse. God says, I want to bring restoration. Amen. Because I do not want the people among you to say, where is your God? I do not want them. The 18th verse. Amen. I do not want them to say, where is their God? God says, then will the Lord be jealous for his land? And pity his people. God wants to, to really bring recovery to the world. God wants to bring recovery to the nation. God wants to bring recovery to his people. You know, we have quoted that verse so much. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. God is a constantly calling for us. For us to be given better. For us to get better. You know in the midst of emptiness there are so many people who are not experiencing their best life. And experiencing the, the hope of, 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 of living and experiencing that their, their lives being satisfied, their needs being met. And it's because they are not sold out to God. They are not sold out. And when we read the 24th verse of this text, the 24th verse of this text, Haman, God is talking about the flaws shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. God is talking about, amen, having provision that will be able, having the resources that will, we will be able to take care of ourselves, our families, and be able to live the, the, the rich, abundant life. So the 21st verse says that he's the God of plenty. God says, listen to me, um, the, 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 25th ver, the 25th verse I'm talking about. He's, he's talking about, about restoring. And I will restore the, to you the years that the locusts had eaten. The locusts, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. My great army which I sent among you. And it, you know, it's quite interesting. I can see if you could throw up another translation of this verse and see if I, that's what I saw. Okay. Yes, that's what I saw. That all of these canker worm and palmer worm and, and, and the caterpillar and all it, well, all of them are considered to be of the same species. And God, God is saying, what is happening here of what is looking to kill you and to kill you and to kill you is, is like we started off with COVID-19 and by the time we, we have gotten the vaccination that people so wanted and now people are confused by, or by the different theories of it, we, we now face a situation wherein we, 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 are, we have allowed the vaccine to linger so long that now the vaccine has, has mutated itself. And in the mutation of the vaccine, now we have alpha, we have beta, 
uh, we have gamma, and we have delta. Now, this is not, this is not, amen, a different, a different thing, you know. It is the same virus, same virus that has mutated itself, and, and by the time we, 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 the vaccine now is going to work to help take care of one situation, by the time it's keep, it keeps on mutating or developing or transforming itself. In other words, the, vac the virus is tricking the vaccine. So that now in America and across the world, Israel as one of the starting points, they decide that, listen, this vaccine is not going to, give, going to be the full potency that we need to deal with the virus. So therefore now we have to um, get boosters. Now we were already afraid to take the, the, the vaccine. Now what are you talking about boosters? So then some people say I ain't taking none at all. So that you, you find that the vaccine, the, the virus now is no longer a vaccine um, for the vaccinated. The vaccine now is a vaccine, um, is, 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 is the vaccine, the fact now, COVID is now a problem for the unvaccinated. Because the people who are in the hospital and the people are dying, get the true statistics, statistics of it, are the people who have not taken the vaccine. Now, I'm not telling you to take the vaccine. It's none of my business. Amen. If you do not want to take it, then that's your decision. But what I'm showing to you is that the, 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 we have become confused and people, because now you are dealing with these, these, these mutations of the, of the virus, you are now dealing with, 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 with people who are even vaccinated, who are getting sick. Who are vaccinated? And they say, you need to, you need to, 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 to take the booster in order for you to survive the worst of the, of the virus. Now, va va vaccination or no vaccination, Jesus should tarry, we are going to die. The plague is going to continue to manifest itself. The, when, when the plague is re re released, when the plague is released, the, 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 as far as, as God is concerned, the scientists and the science um, can, can, can do what they want. Amen. And feel, well, now we're ready to deal with the pandemic. We are not going to be able to deal with this pandemic until God is finished with us. It's not going to be dealt with until God has finished with us. In, in, 19, in 1818, when, when, when God had lifted the curse over, amen, mankind with the, with the Spanish flu, 500 million people were dead. 500 million people were dead. Today, we, we are presently living where over 5 million people have died. And pound for pound, year for year, period for period, we are far better than 1818 when the virus hit the world back then. Because, amen, um, people were not traveling uh, because there were not planes available and people were not crisscrossing the earth and people were not intermingling because people had less people in the world back then. You had something like about two point something billion people living. Now you have about, amen, about seven point something billion people living and, 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 and as a result of what is happening in, by way of travel, we had to shut down the whole world in order for us not to have this thing worse than it, what, than, than it is. Amen. So that God is, is holding time. God is holding time. And in the midst of God holding time, in the midst of God holding time, we are being told by the prophet from God that it's time for us to return to God. Restoration is the call of, for God's people. 
And God is saying, watch, we'll go back to Joel, to Joel. God is saying in Joel chapter 2, amen, uh, amen. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. For the, the years that the pestilence has come. Amen. The great locust and the young locust and the, and, and the other locust and the swarm locust. My great army that I would send. God says, I'm giving back the next translation I had first, Akim. And verse 26 and I close. God is saying, hear me, Joel 2.26. God is saying, you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. That hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Thank you. God is sending. God is sending mercy. Just then. God is sending mercy. God is sending mercy. God is awakening us. So that we can come and find the place of our shelter. To find the place of our safety. Our safety is in him and him alone. Amen. Him and him alone. Yes. When, when there was judgment in Egypt, they were dying. When there was a judgment in Egypt, and blood was in their vessels and in their homes. When there was... The, the, the locusts and the, and the lice in Egypt. In Goshen there was mercy. In Goshen there was the, the favor of God. The keeping power of God. I believe that as we return to God. We are going to experience the mercy and the keeping power of God. Under the blood covering of Jesus Christ. And we are going to experience the blessings of Almighty God. So I, I want us to raise our hands before God. I want us to ask God, God, please bring my heart closer to you. Bring my life closer to you. And let me do what you would have me to do. And let me be saved and my household be saved from the perils of this judgment. So that as we live in a nation that is in trouble, God will spear us from the hurt, the pain, the sadness, and the sorrow that is in it. Oh God, help us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.